Hey guys, this is Matt Granger, that Nikon guy. Welcome back to the conclusion of the 24-70 2.8 showdown. Firstly, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Jump onto thatnikonguy.com and you can subscribe to our newsletter as well. It's all about the enjoyment of photography and I send out weekly emails to help you get out there and enjoy things. Now, we've gone through and done a whole bunch of different tests throughout this series over a three-day weekend. It's been pretty full on and I've spent a lot of time with these lenses to formulate my opinions. Now, in the focusing test that I went through, Canon and Nikon uh, dominated, the Tamron wasn't far behind, and the Sigma was noticeably slower and quite noisy. Next up, we looked at vignetting and flare. Let me just show you some of the sample images from that one. Okay, now I'll let these speak for themselves. They're all taken at 24 mil at f2.8. So that's the Nikon, there's the Sigma, next up is the Canon, and then finally the Tamron. And after this, we have the flare test shooting straight into the sun. There's the Canon, big flare down the left and into the right corner. Quite the same on the Tamron, but it's kept a lot more detail in the shadows than the Canon. On the Sigma, it's a different sort of flare off to the right and the Nikon killing it. We also looked at build quality as well as image sharpness, Okay, here's some sharpness tests side by side. Keep in mind the Canon and Tamron were on the same body and the Sigma and Nikon. That's all shot at f2.8. And then this one was all shot at f5.6. They're both full 100% crops from the center of frame. And then we can't forget the vibration control capabilities of the Tamron. So now let me go through one by one and give you my overall thoughts on them. First up, the Sigma. Now I had this one with the Nikon mount, so it was the head-to-head -head comparison to the Nikkor lens. This one is by far the cheapest out of all the lenses in the offering here. The current US retail is $899. It is DG, HSM, doesn't have any vibration control, doesn't have the weather seal on the back. It's noisy in autofocus and a little bit, definitely the slowest out of these four. Uh, however, the vignetting was reasonably good and so were the other image quality tests overall, not at the same standard exactly. But I'd say if you want to get a sub $1,000 24 to 72.8, this is a good choice. If you're not doing it professionally or even if you are, but you don't have a huge budget, this is a huge step up over your general kit lens and at a fantastic price. Next up is the Nikon 24 to 70. Now I said from the start and I'll keep being completely open and honest about it. This is my most used and most loved lens. Um, it's just phenomenal. Uh, at the end, I don't know that I can separate this from the Canon because they're really not comparable testing one on a 5D, one on a D700. But this is as sharp as fast to focus, definitely as well built or better built than any other lens in this test. Um, with the exception of not having VC, there's no way that this one really falls short of the pack by any significant detail, other than being the most expensive by a fair way. Uh, the build quality is phenomenal, the hood is phenomenal. Uh, I can't tell you the battering this lens has taken over the years I've had with it, and it's just, perfect it's as new the only thing i've ever had to do is replace a rubber seal on it um, so if you've got the money to spend and you're looking at a nikon mount fantastic i can't recommend this more highly next up the canon l lens now this is rightly so a highly prized and respected lens amongst canon users i was really impressed with it um, it performs as well as the nikon lens and that's you know sacred to me uh, it focuses nice and quick. The build quality is fantastic, far above nearly any other lens you'll ever test. I think maybe slightly below the Nikon, but not by far. And in every other respect, it's right up there as is a number one or a close second in all of the different tests I've done throughout. Just a fantastic lens. $15.99, this one's going for in US at the moment. That's excellent. The version two is on its way, which is adding another 500 US dollars to the price phenomenally. I, I can't imagine how much better it's gonna to be to justify that price. But in this lineup, the Canon is a serious contender. If you're looking at getting, you know, one for your Canon camera, obviously, then fantastic lens, can't recommend it highly enough. Really impressive performer. 
And lucky last, the new kit on the block, the Tamron 24-70 2.8 with VC has really impressed me. Um, the, the main thing that lets this down is it has a bit of vignetting. It has, by, out of all of these, it has the most obvious vignetting. Yes, you can easily correct that in software. Yes, some people think it's fine and they don't mind it. If, um, but it is still a downside to the lens if you don't like it or if you would be going through to correct every image. Um, that said, if you're gonna be shooting at f4 and below, then it's not so much of an issue. And depending on what you shoot and how you shoot, it may not be a big issue for you either. The big thing about this one is, in every other regard, sharpness, focus, speed, all of those things, it's pretty close to the Nikon and Canon performances. It's cheaper than both of them, and it has the VC, and the VC performs really, really friggin' well. Um, all the Tamron lenses I've tested that have VC are fantastic, and like I said, the Nikon is my go-to lens. I use it more than half of the time for all my shots, but I'm seriously considering going out and buying one of these ones for its application in video. Often when I'm shooting, if I want a lens that has VC for shooting, but then I'm gonna be using the Nikon 24-70 on my camera body that I'm using to demonstrate something, then I'm relying on like uh, the 18-270 Tamron, uh, which is a crop lens, which is fine because my video camera is crop, but it's not as fast as this by any means, and I'm nearly always below 70 mil on the 1.5 crop DX when I'm doing video anyway. So I would seriously consider getting this one. If you're looking at getting one, uh, I mean, this is gonna be available in a bunch of different mounts. This one happens to be for Canon, but whichever body you're with, if you're looking at getting one and you're tossing up, you know, I really want the VC, but is the image quality going to be up to the right level? I would say undoubtedly, yes, it's good enough. Um, it may be slightly less than the others when you're viewing it at 100% or you know, slightly slower or slightly this or slightly that, but I would happily use this in a professional capacity. The prints are, you know, we're talking about a percent or two. It makes no difference when you're turning in work. I would definitely use this to shoot for a magazine or to shoot a wedding or anything like that without a hesitation. It's that good. Um, it's definitely a step up from the Sigma. The VR is, the VC is adding extra price to it, but you know, you don't get something for nothing. So out of all four of them, I can't say who the absolute winner is because they were divided into two categories. Yes, I think it's fair to say overall, the Canon and Nikon come out on top, but if you're looking for VC, then nothing compares to the Tamron because there is no competitor in the VC market for that focal length. I hope that's been helpful guys. Leave any questions or further comments or if you'd like to see further tests, I'll try to get these lenses again in the future to make a follow-up if necessary. Otherwise, please do share the links for this series around with friends. It takes a lot of time and effort to put all of this together and I hope it's helpful for you. If you're looking at buying any one of these four, check out the links I have below. That would be really great to get your support. Thank you for watching guys. Until next time, this is Matt Granger, that Nikon guy. Get your gear out.